the other thing was I heard you talk about you used to be close with Perry Saturn on another podcast, and I was just wondering if you could give us an update on him. Yeah, I just got a call two weeks ago from Eon, which is a, a producer who's doing the uh, kind of uh, documentary on, on, on Perry Saturn. Um, so, so you know, so Eric, and, uh, or Perry and I got to be real good friends, um, being on a road together and, and, and you know, uh, he's just a genuinely great guy. Uh, one of the neatest guy I know. Um, I mean, he, he folds everything, right? I mean, like he's, you know, if you open up his drawer and, and, and his closet, you got the socks, you know, rolled up and underwear rolled up and t-shirt folded, you know, because he was, you know, the army guy, right? I, mean, I think he was an army ranger or something like that. Anyway, um, great guy. So, when he, when, when, when the, um, um, Benoit Molenko, um, Eddie, and those guys went left, radicals, I think they were called, right? They, they left WCW and went to WWE. Um, um, you know, it, it, it was a big hit for that, I think far as that kind of worker, because they were all great workers, uh, great entertainers. Um, when they left, we kept in touch, you know, and um, um, I think when, when, and I'm not sure how the timing went, but when WCW got bought out by WWE, a lot of those talent got their contract renegotiated. I think that's the best way I can say it. And I think Perry decided not to take their offer. And I, and I don't know the detail or, you know, what the cut was and all that stuff. So Perry reached out to me and asked me if I can help him get a job with New Japan. Um, I called my friend Yuji Nagata, who I manage at WCW. And, and uh, we made a trip to Japan, Perry and I and, and uh, met with their office, and uh, Perry got a job there, and it was a pretty good gig. I, I, if I recall, it was something like $15,000 a week, so many weeks, maybe 10 weeks guarantee, or something to that sort. I can't really remember, it wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't really, but it was a pretty good deal. Perry was really happy because, you know, he didn't have to be on the road, and he, he'd be home, be able to, to work and do other things, um, do some independent shots and stuff like that. So he was really happy about that. S um, I think he worked with Barnett over there, who, who, who still do, does some announcing um, for New Japan. Um, yeah, he's the Access TV announcer. Okay. Or something. And and <clears throat> I think Perry's one of the Perry's job was trying to teach him how to how to do some pro wrestling. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, something happened over there and he got laid off and uh, Perry came home one day and his wife didn't pick him up um, I found this out later that um, and I didn't even know he got laid off from New Japan but what happened was that uh, uh, his wife had filed a divorce paper and protection order, so he couldn't even go back into his own home. Perry had a company called Parents uh, Saturn Enterprise, and he'd been sending all the money from New Japan to direct deposit into his account in the United States. Well, it turned out, according to Perry, all the money was gone. A, a lot, you know, upward of 700, something like that. So, and I think kind of spiraled down here after that, I didn't hear from Perry. I got a call one day and Perry on the other line telling me that if I, true story, ask him if I could Western Union with him at 20 bucks. And I, you know, and this is the man who used to buy, you know, $1,500 Versace shirt. Right? I mean, <laughs> when we're yeah. in Miami, when we're in a bruise cruise, that's what he was doing. And I go, so I go, what, what, what are you talking about? 
he says, well, he, he told me he was homeless. So, of course, I said, well, I'm going to send you a ticket. I want you to get on a plane, come up here, and, you know, we'll figure things out. And Perry said, no, I, I, I can't. I said, what do you mean you can't? He had this huge dog. I mean, it was a big dog named uh, Techno with the dog's name. And he said, I can't leave Techno. Techno and I, you know, he was living on this bridge somewhere. So I said, why don't you do this? I said, I'll send you a ticket, a one-way ticket. You come up here and I'll give you a truck and a trailer. And you go back to Atlanta, pick up your stuff and, you know, come back. And, 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 and I moved him up here to Mason City. Um, and, uh, you know, and I didn't know the, all, the, all, the, all the demons he had and, and, you know, physical ailment he had. He was bouncing here in the north end of the town for a while. I, I booked him on a couple of shows, you know. Um, doing some personal appearance. It was good money. But, you know, one day I get a call from a promoter and saying, hey, Perry never showed up. And I go, how can he not show up? You know, you know, 80 miles down the road. And he go, like, disappear for like three, four days. And, and Perry would tell me, he, you know, I, I, I catch up to him a few days later and he would go, yeah, I got lost. You know, so I knew there was something. And I think he was, you know, he was, um, you know, getting overwhelmed by his demons, you know, and and he was living in, in one of my buildings that I owned or, or, or one of my apartment duplex. And and he got to a point, you know, power was getting shut off and, and you know, I just, um, Perry, you can't keep doing what you're doing. And I remember he had a girlfriend and ended up moving up north to Upper Lee, the town he went, probably went through. And and um, I kind of lost track of him, and but and and he'd been working at some factory up there, and he, he kind of got himself back together. Um, but um, last year, uh, matter of fact, a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, um, we did some. There was a Comic Con in Albert League, Minnesota, a small town, and him and I did some autograph signing, and and you know, kind of rekindle. Uh, relationship at that time the guy named by Eon who's doing a kind of uh, um, um, story on Perry and he'd been trying to get his you know um, and and I did find out he got it so he's uh, um, uh, medical from I think from from his service um, um, so he's going to be getting some money and he's going to get himself back together. And, but he does have, you know, probably have, uh, what is that, ATC or that, the, the brain damage. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Concussion. Yeah, concussion and syndrome. And, and you know, he, he does CTC, have. CTC. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And he does have a lot of, um, you know, physical ailment. And I don't think he can't work anymore. But he can certainly still make some personal appearance and, and stuff. But, you know. Those guys, and I have always said this, the amazing thing about professional wrestler, you know, they, they're, they're tight ropers that works without a net. What I mean by that safety net is that social safety net. You know, you get fired from, you know, making decent money, certainly above average money. And then if you don't have the skill set, you know, I was fortunate enough that I, I owned business and stuff like that before I went in. And certainly I relied on that afterwards. Um, but some of these guys that, you know, young guys, you know, early 20s goes into business, um, worked, at, you know, ride the wave for a few years and gets hurt. Um, you know, they, they don't have a uh, skill set to, uh, 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 you know, get back into normal life as we call normal. And I think that's, that's you know, and that's where the pitfall is. And, and of course, you know. Unfortunate thing about a lot of these guys is they work hurt. You know, I mean, the system is designed so, you know, if you in a if you in a storyline and you get hurt, and you and I in a storyline, you get hurt. Guess what happened to both of us? You know. Yeah. And and so they work hurt, and I think, just like any athletes, who who try to ex extend themselves when they're hurting, um. um they get involved in on, on uh, um, 
pitfall of you know the painkillers and stuff like that and i think that that's the biggest demon that they have to deal with